everyone. We're jumping right into our next bout, Fnatic versus AHQ. And on the side of Fnatic, we spoke earlier in the day a little bit about their preparation. Uh, I want to go to you, Sheepy, because that was a big point for you, and we feel they executed pretty well in their first game of the day. Yeah, I think they are bringing a little bit of the European uh, mentality in there, going with a off-meta pick against uh, TSM, and we've heard before that TSM is struggling against those kind of unexpected picks and struggling to adapt in the match. And I think Fnatic's prep is really, really great. I had, I'm really good friends with Dale myself. Uh, the coach of Fnatic, and I feel like what he's doing is right, and their prep is just on point. And we saw that in the TSM game. So going forward, I think it's going to happen again. Yeah, and I really had to touch on Rainover because I was talking about jungle pressure in that last game from Santor. He really applied pressure. He ganked both solo lanes, got two flashes, and a kill within the first four minutes of the game. That is a jungler doing his job and opening up the map for his team. So Rainover is a huge part of this game. And you even saw TSM feared him in picks and bans and took away the Rek'Sai, and then they said that was to their detriment as well. So he's causing pressure in and out of the game. And another thing that we talked about earlier in the day that we saw come to fruition was Fnatic's warding. Uh, you know, 98 place wards to TSM's 76. Yellowstar alone, 41 to Lust Boys, only 27. So, you know, vision control definitely allowing for some of those aggressive moves around the map earlier and in a much safer fashion. Yeah, and allows Huni to make those TP plays that he's all about. Absolutely. Now on the side of AHQ, though, what are we expecting them to do after we saw them with such an aggressive style there against EDG earlier? Yeah, if they go, if Fnatic play the same kind of game, repetitive ganks, try and count out lanes, expect AHQ to do exactly the same thing. This is going to be another one of those matchups where we see two teams play very similar styles. We saw it once before with Mountain and Clear Love, expect the exact same thing. An early game jungler trying to get into the lane, affect it early. And I think that it's going to be very interesting to see who can get their lane as a hit. I think a curious thing about this is the mid lane champion. So Westdor plays Zed, Fizz, Karthus, Twisted Fate. Almost every champion that Vivian plays gets countered by that. You got the Ari, you got the LeBlanc, you got the Zed, like you got Zerath if need be. This is going to be a lot of mid lane bans tossed around for this matchup. And Fnatic has red side, which means that they get the last pick. So I don't know what Westdor is going to have to pull out for this match to come out ahead in the lane. All right, well, this is AHQ's chance to throw their hat in the ring to contend for one of those uh, top four spots to go into the bracket stages. As we head over to the casters for this match, Yellowstar shares with us his journey from joining Fnatic to now being the veteran leader with a team of fresh faced players. I'm always looking to improve on a daily basis. I mean, what am I going to improve, let's say, tomorrow? How could I be a better person? What do I want to be? So initially, when I joined Fnatic, I knew that they were already doing great, but I knew that I had to step up in terms of shot calling uh, because we had really strong individual players at the same time. It, it's not enough because you need someone to lead the team. That's where I started to main this role and I was really the main voice of, of the team in-game. Peke and Tainad were in Fnatic for such a long time, so maybe two or three years. And yeah, that's why I didn't really mind having those deep personalities. And then I wouldn't say, okay, I have to be recognized as the captain, even though I was acting like one. I, I knew I had my place and I, I was just happy as long as everything works out because all I could wish for is the success of the team. For the first time during the summer split in 2014, we didn't get the summer split title and it maybe started to break the team apart. I felt like we were not respecting each other anymore as workers, even though we were still friends. So the barrier got uh, broken in a sense. Right afterwards, when we didn't pass the group stage, it was a huge disappointment for us because I had really high expectations for Fnatic. Uh, for us, not going through the group stage, uh, I felt like crushed. 
Actually, I was retiring right after the World Championship. I was like, maybe it's not worth for me to keep trying because if I cannot do this by playing maybe 15 hours a day, then it's going to be impossible for me. Then I was given the chance to rebuild a new team and I was like, okay, let's see how it goes. I hope it's not going to be a sinking boat, but I'm going to do my best and try to build it for Fnatic. Without Fnatic, I wouldn't have gotten my spot into eSport maybe. So I kind of had the feeling that I had to give them back something. Starting the season with a whole new roster was actually worrying. And then we started practicing two weeks prior to the beginning of the LCS and I was surprised, I was amazed. I knew that we were going to do wonders, but we needed some more time. I know that I had the strength to lead the young players. I feel like I've been through a lot of years in eSports and I've learned a lot. And now I have totally uh, new players, they are really young and I feel that like my coach and myself and even the manager uh, have a role in educating the young players, teaching them new stuff in real life and kind of be role models. I want as a group like to have a solid group and this is what makes us stronger. So it's, the personalities are going to help us win, but the group is going to win the championships. Beautiful words there from Yellowstar. Really can feel the passion. But ladies and gentlemen, let's check out the starting lineups on the blue side. It's going to be Fnatic with Hooney in the top lane. Rain over there in the jungle for Biven in the mid lane. Steel back in Yellowstar. They're going to be your bottom lane. And on the red side of this match is going to be AHQ Esports Club. Ziv in the top lane. Mountain in the jungle. West door in mid. And at AD Carry and Albus on support. And this team didn't look that strong in their finals performance in the laning phase, but their team fight on the side of AHQ is quite scary, and they do it from a deficit almost every time. And they do it early. <laughs> yeah. They like to focus on those early dragons and start fights. So that's why I think that looking at the bottom lane and having both of these teams with top laners that have very high impact teleports to teleport to the bottom lane very early on for those team fights is going to be really important in this pick ban phase. I do expect AHQ to continue focus Huni, maybe try and ban him into a yep. situation where he's on the Vladimir or something like that. We'll, we'll see if that happens. We we'll get ourselves into champion select on this one. We'll